So today we'll just do some things differently than our normal routine that we were doing. So right now what I want you guys to begin with is reading this case study. We have this case study that is going to be there. We want to discuss this. We want to see how to read a case study, how to decipher it, how to take out some meaning and the relevant stuff from the case study. So you guys, I'm lo loading this on the screen. Then you guys just go through this case and uh, let me know once you reach the end. I'll scroll up and I'll be back in two minutes. Okay. Okay guys, got it? Sorry, I had to step out for some work. Okay. Okay, so...
ओके गाइस वंस यू रीड इट अप टिल द एंड ऑफ दिस पेज टेल मी आई विल चेंज द पेज अप आई नीड टू गेट समथिंग Read it the first page, everybody. Read the first page, then I'll move on to the next page. Then. Read it. Okay, next page. Okay. Yeah, that's it. It's the end of this. So just read it. There's just two lines left. And then we'll see why I have done this exercise early in the morning. ओके आई एल आंसर ऑल दोस्ट क्वेश्चन अभी जस्ट रीड द केस फर्स्ट लेट एवरीबडी रीड द केस लेट मी जस्ट लोड द एक्सरसाइजेस फॉर टूडेज क्लास देन वील आंसर ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन टूडे इज ओनली प्राइमेरली डाउट क्लियरिंग सो दैट यू गाइज गेट अ ऑफिशियल चांस टू ईट माई हेड अबाउट योर एग्जाम एंड योर असाइनमेंट एंड ऑल दैट स्टफ दैट यू कीप टेलिंग मी ओवर द ई मेल दिस इज योर ऑफिशियल चांस टू डू इट इन अ लाइव मैनर so you'll have to bear with me i'm old today so my i may you may think that that a 90 year old person is talking to you in in between so please excuse me i'm not very well so just excuse that okay now let me just get the set of slides in place so that we are all on the same track just give me a second when you looked at the assignments in the case studies in the assignments here there is a challenge that since it has to be done in an online manner the questions need, need to be a bit easier in nature that that is the challenge that we have so just be cautious that these are the marks that are available to you for practically for free the answer is there in front of you you don't even need to remember anything you don't even need to think of anything just look at the case look at the question answer that is the simplistic part but to keep this thing in mind let me take it from a simple manner let me take it like a normal student takes an exam so look at these three questions at the end now this is a normal 14 mark question that appears mm. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Voice is here. I am not speaking. So the point is that now you take this question. Now you take this first question. Okay. What actions of Ravi led to this negative verdict? Now can you take a piece of paper with you and list out the negative actions? Can you start listing them out with you? or if somebody wants to take the energy please type them out in the chat box up to you i want you guys to find out at least 14 problems with ravi 14 problems note them down count them down 14 problems okay till that time the chat box will be blocked i am typing the 14 points myself okay so let's see how much we are on track take take every single problem that he has 
he has with him. Okay, I'll start typing simultaneously. Okay. You guys also in the meantime note them down. I am writing them down. You also do it simultaneously. Three point has been done. Four, okay. Okay guys, now, how many of you got these 15 points that I managed to put down? Okay, good. See, what happens is that when you look at case studies like this, even in your exams, when they come, now let's forget about the exams at the moment, let not, let's not have the exams run run our class okay so when we talk of generally interacting with people generally reading reports see a case study is not just a case study for exams it's a report reading it is reading when you are doing for some academic work maybe for some personal work maybe you are refreshing your academic skills whatever whenever you read things you should always try and pick up the key points from that page from that paragraph from that segment from that article that you are reading try and pick out as many of the points as possible time yourself how fast you read then close your eyes recall how much you remember we used to do this in college one of my faculty one of my teachers used to do this exercise everybody keep quiet for two minutes he used to give one page read the page and then he used to test us how how much we remember what that does is that improves our retention skills and the more we can retain the less we need to study the same thing again and again okay focus it's all about the clarity that you are gaining in your mind now secondly look at question number two now where do you think you'll find the answer for this in which paragraph is the answer for question number two You see, now, again, whenever you read something, whenever you read an article, I'll give you an example. Take any article you want to pick up. It will usually begin with a very short summary about the company or the organization or the topic that is at hand. Then it will come to the meat of the matter, what the topic is, why it has been chosen, what are the problems, what are the challenges that the company or that topic faces, blah, 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 all that stuff. 
that is what you call the literature review part then you begin with the data analysis and then you have the conclusion so whenever you need to look at some things you need to look at things like where you can find data fast it's not about reading speed it's about reading smartly not reading fast you may have a great reading speed but if you don't recall stuff then what's the point so just keep these two or three things in mind and uh, now come to question number 3 how many of you have taken interviews yourself how many of you are at that position in your in your organization maybe as hr recruiters maybe recruiting in your own juniors how many of you have been working as recruitment have taken interviews i am just asking taken interviews given obviously all of you have given and my next question is taken interviews so those of you who have specifically taken interviews and those of you also who are looking at it who are thinking on this topic tell me what would be your reaction if you were the zm amit sharma what would have been your reaction to an interviewee like ravi if a guy like this rocks up to you and and says i am the candidate for the interview what would your reaction be that is my question no no not this rejection you can have multiple reactions na Re rejection also can have different types of rejections different levels of anger different levels of guidance that you would give all those factors matter so now we are heading into the hr aspect of it how do you deal with certain situations how do you deal with certain scenarios communicating does not just simply mean writing out things it means interaction so if you are not prepared to interact as per the situation how would you be a successful communicator we will take more examples on this in today's session this is all what we are going to do so tell me what are your reactions so some one person says this zm is very polite you would have finished the interview faster you would have wrapped up with a couple of questions you would have tried to point out the mistakes initially before you realize how much a problem how big a problem this candidate is going to be what else what else think how would you behave in a situation like this you are stuck with an interviewee who is a complete jerko and then you have to take an interview properly you have to maintain your own professional attitude how do you go about doing this activity that is the question how do you handle this situation meaning alok your point is making slight sense but i'm not sure whether i'm getting the right sense out of it or not can you please elaborate i'm getting a faint understanding of what he's trying to say but not very clear hmm okay okay so see the point that alok is trying to make and what one or two of you else others are also pointing out it's not that he's gone in with an attitude to to throw out this interview no that is not the point that i'm trying to make my point is that if you meet somebody like this in the middle of an activity like an interview how do you respond to that do you try and teach him his problems and then reject him do you try and give him a chance to recover do you try and um, or like what amruta says politely tell him he is not the one the company is looking for how do you handle these situations now on the other hand if you enter an interview and you screw up what would your how would you try and recover the situation and where are the other guys we have 42 entrants and i am seeing only 
five six people running around with the chat boxes. Where are the other guys? Is this just a login and stay week or what? Come on, guys, participate. We have so many people in the list for a Sunday and for a late class. This is uh, the attendance is excellent. Where are the other people? Yeah, is it getting a bit boring? Te te tell me, I'll try and change tack. If this is not the thing that is making you interesting, I'll change it. I have other things to talk about also today. So please tell me. I don't want it to be a boring session. I just keep talking and you just keep listening to me just for the sake of it. So please don't do that. Tell me if I'm boring you or if this is not, not the right direction. We'll change it. We'll get something else to do. question was let me repeat the question here was that we are looking at your reaction to specific situations now if the question the situation here is you are an interviewer taking an interview for candidate who is not suitable or who is not matching your requirements how do you politely tell him that or how do you handle that whole interview situation that is my question i hope it's clear now Okay. You should tell him what he needs to improve all of this. Okay, fine. So let's go with this thing down. Let me come to the next page in this list. Okay. Now let's come to this case study. Okay, now just a couple of things you guys need to know in mind before we read this case. Who is this guy? Okay, concierge is a help desk. Any other guy facing a problem with voice breakage? It's just that I am not speaking continuously. I am pausing in between. So that may, it may feel that it's a breaking voice. But no, the voice is breaking because of me. I am not speaking continuously. Okay. So, just a couple of this. Okay. Now, ha, concierge, you all know what it is. And Sheraton has how many stars? Sheraton is how many stars? Five stars, four stars. I think it's five depends on the properties. So let's take an average value. It's a five star hotel. So it's a five star hotel that is there. Okay. Now you read this case study in this context. The context of the employee being a concierge, the person people depend on for their tra travel plans during their stay at the hotel. And if the guy is, if the hotel is of the standard of a Sheraton hotel, that means it's a five star property and people expect a lot of service. A very, very, very high level of service is expected. Now you read this case, then I'll see the reaction part. Just read this case. It's just this much that is there on the screen. There's nothing less, nothing above this. So just reread this. It should not take you more than two minutes.
Okay, please re-read this to the end and te tell me once you're through so that we can move on. That's it, that's it. There, there's no next page or anything below this. Okay. Now, question number one. How many of you have gone to office in this kind of a scenario and behaved in a similar manner? And tried to behave in a similar manner. That irritated mood. Nobody should talk to me that day. In that morning, in that first half, nobody should be talking to me. No crazy questions should pop up. No, no irritating customers should come. A boss should not call me for a meeting. That kind of stuff. How many of you have thought of this way? Case ends here. There is no extra, nothing, nothing beyond this page. Other guys, own up. Now, what does your boss do when you, if you end up mistakenly behaving like this? Anybody unfortunately behave like this in front of a customer or a colleague or a client or something? Hopefully not. My rat ended on my students. So, corporate trainer or uh, Shubra, corporate trainer or what? DO students are worth it, so don't so don't worry. I was also a DO student. I know that sometimes we do need it need to be shouted upon. So that is a separate problem. Obviously, DU me to students are worth it also. So that isn't a challenge. Now the point here is that sometimes you see at this moment. Sometimes, as we say, ignorance is really bliss. Why do I suddenly say this? Why is this thing suddenly popped up into my head? Anybody? Why is this st statement suddenly running around my head? Completely different from the work we are doing, completely different from what it is. Just in the past one minute, this st statement has come to me. Why do you think this has happened? Tell me. Let's see how my alert you are. To changes. Mm, okay, try, try. Somebody else try. Come on, guys, wake up. Half of you are still looking like asleep. No, the ignorance is bliss part here is. That till the time I thought that I was the only guy on the other side of the, with experience on the other side of the table, I was happy. I was a happy camper. But now since I realize that there is a person in this class list who does uh, amount, who does a job role that is similar to mine, I am getting a bit conscious. So that was why I used this terminology that ignorance is bliss. Okay, now, huh. now let's come back to the work at hand and stop laughing so much, please, on my misery. Hmm. Okay, so let's come back to this question at hand. Now, when if this kind of a entity comes in the exam, let's say this kind of a question, this small caselet, it's not big, didn't take you more than about five minutes to read it. So in this kind of a situation, let's say we ask you a, how, what sort of questions can we ask you? So, I can ask you something like this. Number one. Hmm. Answer this. Okay, then uh, 
ओके आंसर दिस वन आंसर द सेकंड वन ओके सो दिस इज हाउ वी विल आस्क यू योर मल्टीपल चॉइस केस स्टडी क्वेश्चंस ऑन ट्रैक नाउ लेट मी कम टू द नेक्स्ट पोर्शन दैट इज नाउ आई विल आस्क यू वन क्वेश्चन If you are the manager, you are Damien's boss, and Lisa comes to you and complains. Let me write out the question. Yeah, yeah. Case study should should be visible for reference. Now come to this question. If Lisa comes to you and complains, what would you do? What would be your reaction? Allow Damien to go home. okay otherwise you will say sorry anybody from the hospitality industry here today joined in with us anybody working in a hotel or something of that sort or have had experience working there if you have give me a practical response anubhav is missing yeah anubhav is missing yes Yes, yes, yes. I know I was missing. We are all listening, listening. How will you keep her quiet? That is my question. Allow a sick leave to Damien. Okay. Many of you are saying that. Allow a sick leave to Damien. Hmm. but won't that be encouraging him think of it won't that be encouraging damien to continue with this sort of a behavior there was one class me in one se session i asked this question somebody says that it is the problem of sheraton hotel because they don't even provide a discipline to their employees that word what somebody had said They didn't even provide a discipline. Don't don't they have a first aid kit for to give him some discipline or some other headache medicine, whichever suits suits him, aspirin or whatever you want to call it. That that was what one person said. Another person said was he was a hotel industry guy only. He was he was working with Obra as a training manager or something. What that guy had said was at least. give lisa some vouchers to keep her happy give her a free meal voucher or a free uh, voucher for some other service or the other that was what he said i am just quoting so whatever you do whatever action you take however you react to a situation you need to have a logic behind it the point is the logic that is behind your every action so if you don't have a logical reaction to it then it will never work okay now let's come to the second part third part sorry that was the second part okay now read this letter up till here now remember what we did in letters in session 2 i know it's a long shot but try and remember and try and identify the problems with this letter
just read this please and then try and identify the problems that are here. Just read the matter of the letter from the su subject to the SD part at the end. That, just read this please. Okay, communication from both parties is not proper, it has a root tone, it is unacceptable, there is a I don't care attitude, what else? Its use of language is not correct, okay, should be a bit more formal, okay, straightforward, not polite, okay. You are now getting on the touched on the tone. The tone part you have covered perfectly fine. The tone and attitude comes out problems with both of these. You guys have identified pretty nicely. Now let's come to the next part, which is the content part. Not the tone, not the way it's written, not the language, not the formal or informal part, but just the fact that what is the problem with the content of the letter? Not the way it's written, but what exactly is written in the letter? Hmm, okay, so Sharan gives a reasonably structured answer. He's telling the negatives as per his own convenience. Okay. Okay, jumping by refund food charges is something unacceptable. What else? See, when you write a letter like this, how much of this part of the letter is actually useful? Except for the first line where it says, We have received your request for a refund or replacement. And the last line, last paragraph third para rest all is actually a wastage of paper all of this rest part is actually a wastage of paper there is nothing that it tells the customer who may be me for example there is nothing that it tells me that how should I react to this loss that has happened how is my company from whom I purchased this equipment reacting to this is all I know how it has gone bad he's just paraphrasing my letter he is trying to give me the model specification in the second paragraph it is irrelevant as Shikhar says it's irrelevant and it's totally junk it is actually junk
so this is how you need to write you need to take care when you write letters to your customers or you write a letter to anybody remember our 5 w's what were the 5 w's that we had used earlier anybody remember them remember these 5 w's that we had discussed earlier Come on, come on, list out the five here. Come on, guys. Five W's. What are the five W's? Who, what, when, where, why. Good. If you remember that part, that is actually good. okay now when you ask yourself these questions just checking how many of you remember these parts many of you do which is good so when you write any communication just please 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 remember these five parts that are there who what when where why once you ask yourself these questions you would be in a better position to work on this portion in a much better position to be able to answer, write a letter or draft a communication that is precise that is effective and that is beneficial to people to so just keep these few details in mind when you are writing anything on paper now let's come to the uh, next part okay again now just read this much the part that i have highlighted on the screen just read this much is this clear this is clear enough so let's zoom in better just begin with the name okay let me try and highlight it begins from here till later on till down then we'll go down and up till okay now let me go back up read it please i think it's clear enough try and read it please guys i'll send you a better version from later on i'll be just try and re read it with this this version only Okay. 
Yeah, that's it. Okay. What's the she here? Who's the she here? She is not asking for anything. It's Troy. It's a guy. Gender issues, guys. Yeah, oops, your bad, yes. Okay, what else? Now, what are the problems with this? Now, since you've read it, fine, all of you are office professional, all of you have done this kind of activity somewhere or the other, sending explains claims to your boss or to your admin officers or whatever. So, how do you go about doing it? Is this a right way to do it or is there a better way to do it? That is my question. What are the problems? Number one, it's longer. Number two, they can be a more formal way to do it. What else? Okay, could have a bullet structure, could be crisp and precise, informal expenses can be listed out, it needs to be to the point, no need to build a story. Okay, now, see the point here is that uh, there are a few mistakes here, so let's begin with the first one. First one is this one. First problem is this thing. Look at this guy's location. France. Okay. Now you guys are absolutely right that this paragraph is entirely wasted. Subject is missing. Good. Date should come down. Okay. Let's remove the formatting parts right now but subject missing is a very glaring error now you look at these two things that i highlighted mr and france why have i made this highlighting why have i made this highlighting mr and france why this specific set Yes, Vikas has managed to get the point that I was trying to get. For a gentleman in France, it's not Mr. It's okay. How is it pronounced for a, a married lady? In France, what is the designation, what is the nomenclature for a married lady? Uh, Mademoiselle is for unmarried ladies. Madame is the one for the married lady. Just keep the designated nomenclature part in mind because if you remember, we did this earlier. Na? Hmm. 
remember this we did did it in the second session when we were doing those exercises on how to write a letter remember this this is very important that needs to be kept in mind you cannot have a person with the wrong designation or wrong addressing or wrong form of addressing so that is the major problem here second part here also from here till here this is also wasted here this one is this necessary is this my detail really necessary this level of familiarity with your boss is really this guy is director of accounting and this guy is just a sales rep so in the hierarchy of the organization there is a big difference between these two people so is this the way to go about doing it with your boss would you be this formal with would you be this informal with your boss i won't be i don't know what sort of relationship you have with your boss but personally speaking i won't be and i don't think anybody of you would be also this informal even if your boss allows you to be that you would have your own propriety to keep in mind then come down hmm let me scroll down to the next part here now see this paragraph that i have just highlighted this one between the green line what is better reading it in a paragraph or reading it on uh, as a table which one would be better bullet points table all those things see when you write like this the correct way would have been this is my expense list for this i am sorry that this is later this is extra later there is you can just put one line in case you have any queries please feel free to contact me explains our uh, results uh, expenses are explained below that is how you can work on this it makes it shorter makes it crisper makes it clear makes it clean theek okay? hai so just keep these factors at point and you guys are on the right way forward now let me just minimize okay now let's come to something different 